Oh 
That's right. There is no Christmas without Christ. You know, it's amazing, Veronica. I listen. Actually, there's just Christ. <laughs> what blows my mind and what people don't realize is that it, gospel radio, gospel music, Christian music, right? When November comes, basically it shuts down. They shut down for, the, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, okay? And then the world capitalizes on Christmas, Christmas yeah. with their merchants, with their Christmas yeah. music yeah. that Amy Grant sings and Michael W. Smith. They're the only Christian artists that do the secular Christian music that doesn't represent Jesus whatsoever, has nothing to do with Christ. Okay, they say it in name, but they replace it with merchants, with, with yeah. stuff, because the Jewish community hate Jesus. So what they do is they... Not they, all of them. Not all no, of them. No, not every... No, I'm just saying... But, yeah. but th that's the music industry. Yeah, that's... So the music industry is promotes the secular Jesus. The secular Jesus. Not the Christian Jesus. <laughs> secular this Jesus. is the truth, people. Go listen to your radio. Oh, you know, they sing you know, Jingle Bells and, you know, whatever they sing... Uh, the, the goofy, goofy songs that, that we grew up on that have nothing to do with Jesus. That's right. And let me tell you That's something. Right. When you take, I tell people all the time, when you take the gospel out of people, there's no gospel to be given. So when you take Jesus out of Christmas, you, there's no Christmas to be given. So you wonder why we, no, the, you know, it's amazing because it's supposed to, be the, supposed to be the most joyous time of the year. And for most people, Veronica, it's a horrible yeah. time of the a year. Horrible time of Why? the year. Why? Yeah. Because they've replaced Jesus. They've mocked him. Yeah. With Christmas, That's they've right. mocked Jesus. It's a mocking of Jesus. It's That's not good. the Jesus of the Bible yeah. that we're preaching Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Okay, guys, I'm telling you, yeah. this is the truth. Yeah. God showed me clearly as I'm going around, and, I'm, and I went to a Christian radio station, right? On the, on the radio on the way to work, and I heard all the goofy Christian songs that were supposedly lifting up Jesus. It don't lift him up at all because he doesn't even hear it. How does he hear sin? How does he hear the worship of sinners? He don't. That's the reality. Sorry, you know, call, call what yeah. you want, but that's, and I hate to go that strong today, but, but I want people to get an understanding of Christmas. And yes, yeah. it and represents it represents the birth of Jesus Christ. It's supposed to. It's supposed, supposed to. to. Right. It's, that's it's commercialized. It's okay, but because they okay, just because they commercialize it doesn't mean that we can't expose it for what it is. Yeah. And the reality is yeah. is that the real reason really is because we celebrate the birth of Christ. That's right. what Christmas is. It's not but seek real Christians celebrate Christ. Right. Not just on a holiday. Real every Christians day. celebrate Christ every single well, day. Well, well, it's like Easter. We're supposed well, to. Well, it's like Easter, the yeah. risen they what really? <laughs> he Jesus rises every day. You fall every day. I mean, come on, it's it's the reality. We're a I bunch of falling I, angels. I could have never written this song today. I could have never written this song today. No, no that's but it's an incredible okay lyric. It's part of our journey. It's part of our journey. And uh, but you know what, guys, we're not. We're and, not. Uh, and I don't want to throw a monkey in the wrench. You know, the people that want to partake in the foolishness. Okay, but the, <laughs> you can. You know what? You can have a better Christmas if you replace the false Jesus with the real one. Because yeah. when you put the real one Good. first and you worship him Good. and you praise him and you sing his glory, then you're going to experience peace, joy, and happiness. Because the peace, joy, yeah. and happiness that the world's talking about, you will never receive. That's right. You will never receive. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my Jewish brothers and sisters. I love you. And I'm going to tell you something. You're looking for Jesus to come back. He already came back. Okay, right. and yes. he's waiting for you to come back to him. Woo. So when you come back to him, Woo. it's yes. going to be on for you. Woo. You're going to be made free, made free. Then, then the freedom that God gives is a lot better than what the world gives. Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. Amen. Well, praise God. Uh, I want to share my testimony a little bit because 
this is not the most joyous time of the year for everyone. And so that um, brings me to something that the Lord did in my life. Um, well, starting 24 years ago, our son is 24 years old. And um, just so just real quickly, I want to share this before we um, sing this next song or last song. And um, guys, by the way, this is a part two <laughs> of this uh, Christmas worship. So you can go to the first part as well. But uh, anyway, we had moved um, to, to a new city. We had moved into a new home. Everything was seemingly going well in our lives. Um, we had just won Dove Awards and uh, traveled around the world singing, doing what we um, dreamt as singers and what we were kind of we were told to do as singers right. and what we, we dreamt about doing all of our lives. So we were realizing our dreams and... Um, I remember everything was going well, everything. We, we had just had our firstborn. Yep. We just had our firstborn son. And, um, and you know what? This one day, um, my husband, Angelo, took our son out for the day. And when they left, I planned to take my life. That's what I planned to do. Because nobody knew what I was going through, and I was going through a deep depression, a deep depression, and that I had been going through this, not in just in that time, not just because of postpartum, but I had been experiencing this for many, many years. So I have, was very fearful as a child. I would have never thought that I'd be able to speak in public or sing in public either. Yep. Like how I'm a singer is, is a miracle and how I'm able to, you know, share my testimony or share the gospel is a miracle from God. And God enables me to do it because I had a spirit of fear from, a li from just a little girl, probably baby, as soon as I was born. So um, the Bible says anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression but a good word makes it glad. So anxiety and fear always snowballs into depression. And it gets bigger and darker. And it's like a hole you feel like you're falling into that you cannot find your way out of it. It's like I can see it in my mind. Even though I, I'm free from it, praise God, it is, it is a deep, dark hole that you're falling in and there's just no way of escape. There's no light at the end of that tunnel. And that's what I felt at that very moment. I heard voices telling me, you are not a good wife. You are not a good mother. You are not a good Christian. Christian. And you'd be doing more harm than good by staying in the world. Yes, guys, this is as a Christian. This was as a Christian artist. Okay. I was a Christian with little faith, no peace, and no joy. Guys, that's really not a Christian at all. No. Because that's okay? not what God promises you. That's right. He <clears throat> promises fullness of joy. That's right. And I remember at that moment, I was just, I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to check out. I'm ready to check out of this life. And I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to take my life? Because I'm just no good to anybody. I'm not worthy to be in this world. I mean, it was just overwhelming feelings of hopelessness and desperation and worthlessness. Overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Guys, these spirits came to get me that day. They came to get me and to drag my soul to hell, okay? And so, <sighs> praise God that my husband and my son came in and walked in the door, and it was like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Here I am about to, they don't even know anything. I am about to take my life and they walk in. It was like, oh, my gosh, what is going on here? And I remember just 
just uh, being just, it just woke me up just for a minute, just for a minute. And I just cried out to the Lord. I said, God, I can't do this anymore. I cannot live like this anymore. I am crying out to you and I'm ready to do whatever it is. I have to do whatever changes I need to make. Yeah. Boy, guys, when you are rock bottom, you'll make whatever changes you need to make in your life. And I was, I was ready to check into that mental hospital. I was ready to whatever, yeah. to do whatever. But God showed me the way. And I remember sitting in church, really not, not hearing anything, very, just very uh, shaken up from this experience. And, and my emotions were still very raw in that very moment. And I just heard one thing that I grabbed a hold of. And all the preacher said the person who was speaking that day, he said, when you read the Bible, read it out loud. Yep. And that was all Good. he said. And <clears throat> I was like, oh, wow, we never did that yeah. as Catholics growing up. We, well, we really well, you didn't. do, yeah, but you do it in yeah. service. Everybody does it corporately. Really didn't. Oh, that's true. <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, but the Bible. Read the Bible. You know, here's what I love. No, no, when, I was, <laughs> when I was young, I remember the priest was, our father, one heaven. It's like, it's like, it's like a death sentence. You're praying to God. What kind of prayer is that? Uh, it's like it's just right. So yeah, whatever. So it's whatever. like, so the person said, when you read the Bible, read it out loud, guys. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, yeah. hearing by the word of God. Now that's also spiritual hearing, but you do have to hear it in your ears. You gotta hear right. that word. You gotta hear it, it does. not just physically, but spiritually. No, it builds your faith. So I started with guys. For those of you who may not be Bible readers, guys, please right. hear me. <clears throat> hear me. I started with a few scriptures. I, I, I. Somebody had given us a uh, a promise book when we were out touring, yeah. and and I remember finding it. And hi started highlighting scriptures that spoke to what I was going through at the time. Right. Because every word of God, okay, there is a prescription. There's Guys, a there good is word a prescription right for every man's condition, okay? And our biggest sickness, okay, is not physical, but it's of the soul. Yeah, it's wordless. Our it's wordlessness. It's sin. It's sin. It's wordlessness. In other words, you're not reading the word. So I started highlighting, and I started with three scriptures, guys. I started 24 years ago. I started with three scriptures. Those were uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That was the very first time that I realized that fear was a spirit and that that fear had made his home with me all of my life. That's the first time I realized that, that I had a spirit of fear that it was attached to me, would not never leave me alone and tormented me day and night. The other scripture was Psalm 139, 14. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works. Guys, I had had such issues with self-esteem. It was just, it blows my mind. Young women and, young, and men and men have the same self-esteem issues today and more, okay? Because the devil will never, ever, ever, ever let you know who you are in Christ, ever. He uses it as a weapon mm. against you. <clears throat> to hold you down. So I didn't know who I was. And then I discovered, wow, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. The other scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, for God knows the plans that he has for you, plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future, a hope, an expected end, yeah. plans of peace, not of evil, Yep. You know what? And whatever <clears throat> the enemy meant for evil, God means for good. And ever, God has turned 
everything around in my life. And let me tell you, I started speaking those words. And when you speak God's word, you begin to speak life. Okay? It becomes life to your spirit, life to your physical body if you're sick. Okay? It is life. So I started speaking these words, and let me tell you, this depression, this dark cloud <laughs> of depression started lifting, 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 lifting from my life. So, and now, guys, I have come into greater and deeper relationship with God more than I ever have here in the middle of a pandemic, okay? And I have more joy and more peace than I ever have had in my life. And guys, this is possible That's right. for you. <clears throat> this is absolutely possible yeah. for you through Christ Jesus. And that's who we want to tell you about today. And I want to share a little testimony because I've, I think it's important to piggyback on what Veronica dealt with <clears throat> and what many people deal with. You know, I never dreamed in 62 years of my life that I would ever do anything other than music, other than sing, produce, write, play, and, and create music. That's what I thought that was, was going to last forever. I, I was a professional musician at the age of 13 years old, working four nights a week in clubs till the age of 33. So I know the world. I've, know, I know, I've been in that world, done it. Seen it, been it, done it. Then I got into the record industry, and that was probably worse than the world. But, but that was my experiences. But um, the reality is, when I took this job at Amazon, I, I really asked God, you know, why, why am I here? Why, why am I, do I, I feel like I'm being demoted. That was my pride. See, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. When you humble yourself, it's like Paul. Paul desired to, to, to live off the gospel, but it wasn't profitable for him. So he, he was a tent maker, and he gave most of his money to the poor. Okay, people don't realize that Paul was a worker. Jesus was a carpenter. Okay, church, man, we, you, know, you, you, better, you better ask your pastor these questions because the reality is, is that we have to come to a place in our life that we got to humble ourselves. So all that to be said, when I got to there to Amazon, people that I never knew, walking by, never knew them, and they would come up to me, say, hey, can, can you help me? And it, 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 it kind of confused me at first. I mean, this has happened multiple times, not one person, multiple times. There are many people in the world struggling with anxiety that's overwhelming that they have to take drugs, they have to be on medication, they have to go to the doctors, they have to go to the therapists. And, 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 I, and I share with them, I said, can your therapist heal you? Can your therapist take you off of drugs? Does your drugs heal you? No, they're called Band-Aids. They sell them right up at Walmart. You can go up there and get one, Walgreens, get a Band-Aid and put it on your head. I, I had one in my nose for a long time. Anyway, <clears throat> but the reality is that people are dealing with s serious sadness and, and, and anxiety. And um, I have a video coach here. But uh, the thing is, is, the reality is, is that people are suffering. And they're suffering because there's no God in their life because they've, the, the God that they've seen in America it's not the God of the Bible. Mm. I promise yeah, you. That's right. God has been mocked. Okay, God has been made to look like the world wants it to look, not the way the Word wants it to Ooh, work. Yes. And in order to find that real true meaning of Jesus, you have to read the Word of God for yourself. Get it for yourself. Why would you depend? Why would you let your soul and your spirit be controlled by a man when Jesus said, let no man deceive you? Jesus warned us over and over and over in the Bible, if you read it, not to be deceived by man. And what happens, we go to these churches, 
that a 501c3, they're under the government, they're not under God, sorry, it's a business, it's corporate. So when I went to Amazon, it was like, wait a minute, these people are helping me to discover what the real church is and what real phony is because they're coming out of their mouths and I don't even tell, I didn't even tell them I'm a pastor because I don't believe, I say, my name is Angelo. If, if I can help you, see, that's what it's all about. And if anybody there, they need help, and we're going to start a group of people that are needing help. And I'm believing, and pray for us, pray that God will give me the wisdom to speak to these young people, that they don't have to be under medication. Because I asked this one guy, he says, yeah, are you in medication? Are you a therapist? I said, I said, how long is that going to last? They want to keep you under the pharmaceutical system for the rest of your life. I had a sister that was bipolar at the age of 16, and then she died at 58 because of the drugs that were given to her. That's what I believe. I believe the drugs destroyed my, my sister. She shouldn't have died at 58 years old. But the salt and that, and that, and that drug killed her body. Anyway, there is hope. There is a future, just like the, Veronica spoke the word of God. And you know what? Jesus is that hope. Jesus is the reason for this season. Jesus will make you free, okay, if you come to him, okay? Jesus said, if anyone believeth in me and do not doubt, he will be, he will be with you through the end of time. He will give you everlasting life. It's up to you to, re, to accept that. And you know what? And, to, and not look at what you see. See, faith doesn't come by seeing. Unfortunately, we see things rather than hear things that God wants you to hear. So shut off all these, all this, all this distraction of what Christmas, what the world calls Christmas, and open your Bible yeah. and see what the real Christmas is. Oh.
the hardest Christmas concert yeah. I've ever done in my, in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, we love you. You we know what? I want to pray with yeah. the people. Say, uh, you can just repeat these words. If you want to give your life to Christ, you know what? If, if you see this Christmas and you go, you know what? There's more. Yeah. There's more. There, there is, is more. Christ Jesus. There's a lot more. The risen King, guys, he's real. Christ is real. They make him into a caricature, but let me tell you, yeah. God is real. He did. Oh, yeah. Jesus came in the flesh. Yep. He came to give his life for you. Come on. Jesus willingly gave his life, was crucified, buried, and rose on the third day. And God is your healer. Amen. He will heal your anxiety. <laughs> he will heal That's right. heal your fears and your depression. That's right. If you just surrender your will unto him. He came to bring peace. Peace yeah. on earth and that's good right. will to men. Peace. So that's what he has for you. Shalom. If you want this gift of eternal life, you yes, know what? Right. You can just repeat these words come with on. me. Father God, Father God, I come to you. I come to you. And I confess my sins. And I confess my sins. I give you my life, I give today. You my life today. I know that there is more than this. I know there's more than this. And I want your peace. And I want your peace. So I confess my sins. So I confess my sins. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you died for that me. That you shed your blood for me. That you shed your blood for and me. And that your blood washes my sins away so that your blood washes my sins away you were risen on the third day you were risen on the third day and that makes you christ and the that king that makes you christ the king i receive i receive what you came for what you came for to give me to give eternal me life eternal life and that i would not and that i would not end up end up in in under wrath under wrath so father god so father god i thank you i thank you for eternal life for eternal today, life today starting today starting today and forever and in forever. jesus name in jesus name